today's broadcast, we're sharing a program with Angela Jones. She is the main librarian at the Levine Children's Hospital Family Resource Center, and she is going to get, present how to search for reliable health information. And now I'll turn the floor over to Angela. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. Um, my name is Angela Jones. As was mentioned, I am the librarian at Levine Children's Hospital. Um, we are close to um, not quite a 300 bed children's hospital here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, we treat um, children of all ages from infant all the way up to 18 and sometimes beyond. Um, and we have a family resource library or family resource center uh, in our hospital to help families get information about their child's diagnosis, treatment, uh, even well child information. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about um, how to search for reliable health information. Um, I know a lot of you, whether it's you have gotten a diagnosis for yourself or your child, well, first thing you'll do is hop on the internet to start searching. Um, what I wanna talk about is how we can find good health information. Um, I can tell you all day long, please don't go Google, but I live in the real world and I know you probably will. Um, so I just wanna talk about how you can evaluate the information you're, you're seeing um, to make sure that it's good, good information. Um, and why should we evaluate health information? Um, unlike decades in the past, health information is readily available and easy to find today. But finding trustworthy, reliable information actually takes some effort um, on your part. We have information coming at us from the internet, newspapers, TV, magazines, social media, and some of it is up to date and reliable, but some of it is not. And it is important to be able to evaluate health information so you can make good decisions for yourself and your child. Um, some questions that you should ask yourself when um, you are looking at websites. Um, who runs the site? Where did the information come from? Is the information reviewed by experts? Why have they created the site? What do they want from you? Is it up to date? Who's paying for the site? Does the site information favor the sponsor? Do they want your personal information? What will they do with your information? Does the site make unbelievable claims? So I'm gonna focus on um, a few uh, things to think about when you're looking at websites on, on the internet. Uh, first is accuracy. Um, Who's responsible for the site? Can you readily identify the site's sponsor? Any good health-related website should make it easy for you to learn who is responsible for that site. Um, a quick tip is look for a link that says about us or who we are. It's gonna list um, who the um, content writers are, um, hopefully, folks in the healthcare profession, um, maybe who their board of directors are, um, so you can understand um, where the content is coming from um, and, and where does this information come from. Many sites post information collected from other sources uh, and the names of those authors and original sources should be clearly stated. Um, look for signed articles. They'll usually tell you if there was a particular physician or nurse who wrote the article. Um, or whether it was produced by a well-known health-related organization. Also, is an email address given so that you could ask questions or make comments about the site? There should always be a way to contact the site owners. Um, another tip, look for contact us or feedback. You will find... Um, Good websites are usually run by one federal government agent, federal government agencies um, like the National Institute of Health, Centers for Disease Control, National Cancer Institute, and the National Library of Medicine. You've probably heard of a few of those. Um, medical schools or hospitals are also good places to find information. Um, Mayo Clinic, Johns Hopkins, University of North Carolina School of Medicine, 
Um, even our own Levine Children's Hospital will have some information. Uh, large professional or nonprofit organizations are also really good places to find good information. Um, things like the American Heart Association, Heart Association, excuse me, um, which is a nonprofit, and American Academy of Pediatrics, which is a professional organization. Um, American Academy of Pediatrics even has um, a particular section. It's called Healthy Children, which is geared towards you, the parent. Um, other things you want to look for is purpose. Why does the site exist? Is it to inform the public? Is the main purpose to sell a product, or service, or to promote the opinions of a person or group? A trustworthy website has one goal, to give good information. Um, a quick tip is to look for a link to their mission statement, which should tell you clearly what their purpose is. Uh, who pays for the site? Is it funded by ads? Does a business fund the site? Government fund it? Um, tip, please look for funding or partners. Um, usually a very good website will let you know where the money comes from. Um, sometimes you'll see uh, a link to donations. That doesn't mean that they're asking you for money to get to their content. It just means that that's how they keep things up and running. Is the privacy and security policy clearly stated? Many sites ask you to become a member or they gather personal information in other ways. Any credible health site asking for this kind of information should tell you what they will and will not do with it. Um, look for assurance that any personal information you supply will be kept confidential and will not be shared with third parties. Um, current, is the information updated regularly? Health information changes constantly. As new knowledge about diseases and treatments is gained through research and patient care, websites should reflect the most up-to-date information. Um, tip, look for last updated or last reviewed for the date an article was written, reviewed, or revised. Um, you're going to often find this at the bottom of the page, but you may also find it at the top. Depends on the website. Um, there are certain things that are not likely to be updated very often just because they don't change. Um, things like child development, you're a new parent and you're looking at your, you know, what your child's milestone should be. That's not something that really changes over time. So that article may not be reviewed or updated very often. Um, doesn't mean it's not good information. It's just one of those things that's not gonna change. Um, things that will change and need to be kept current are treatments, um, sometimes, surgeries, medications, things like that, um, prognosis, you know, diseases that did not have good outcomes a long time ago would have, might now have good outcomes. So you want to make sure things like that are kept up to date. Um, are links to other pages kept current? The presence of dead links is a sign that a site is not well maintained. Um, every now and then you're going to get uh, a page that maybe has a dead link and it could be a site problem, but if it continues to go on, then you're likely looking at a site that is not being kept up to date and well maintained. Um, things to look for, page not found or uh, other error messages. Some of my go-to websites, and we will talk a little more in depth uh, about one of these, um, Medline Plus, that is my absolute number one go-to one-stop shop. Um, you can find it at medlineplus.gov. That is the National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health. Um, that is the best website I can give you to look for information. Um, it's easy to navigate. It comes in multiple languages, um, and it actually gathers together um, some of these other websites as well um, that I have listed in one place. Um, think of it as the Google of healthcare. Um, you're not gonna have to weed through a bunch of article um, websites and things that are not pertinent. Um, everything is right there for you. Um, kidshealth.org is a great website for pe pediatric specific information. Um, it is by the Nemours Foundation. Um, the only language you can get is Spanish and English, um, but sometimes they have video. There's also audio for most of their art articles. If you don't read very well or you can't see, 
um, or you're more of an auditory learner, um, it's great that the articles are actually read to you. Um, NORD, which is for Rare Diseases, um, National Organization of Rare Disorders. NORD is great for those um, rare diseases because there's really not a lot of information out there. You're not going to find it um, in the mainstream websites. Um, they're very, very comprehensive. They will also list number of journal articles that they've cited. Um, they will also give you a list of organizations that you can reach out to for more information or support. It's just an amazing website. Um, it's free to families, so you're not having to pay for this information. Um, so it's just a really wonderful website. Clinicaltrials.gov is also the National Library of Medicine and National Institute of Health. It's a great place if you are looking for a clinical trial. Um, say your child has a particular type of cancer or a gastrointestinal disease, and you want to see if there's a clinical trial because they're not responding to current medications or treatments, um, it's a great place to look. Um, PubMed is National Library of Medicine and National Institute of Health. Um, it is also um, for medical journal articles. These are the journals that your physician, nurses, practitioners are reading. Um, it's where you'll find published studies, um, also free to the public. Um, you're not always going to find a full text article, but you will find um, at least an abstract. So you can read the abstract. Before, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and just talk a little bit about other forms of that we get information from, and then I'll circle back to my, my favorite. Um, social media. A lot of us are on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, posts within social media accounts do not guarantee that it is good information, um, even when it comes from a person you know. Um, ask yourselves the same questions you would if it were a website. Make sure you know where the information originated and what is the purpose. Um, along those lines, I'll talk about a little bit about blogs. Um, a lot of times you'll find blogs um, that are around a certain health uh, topic or disease. Um, do blogs have value? Yes. Their value is in that it can help you understand how a particular family or patient um, went navigated a, a disease or illness. Um, is not the place you want to go to find out what are the latest treatments um, because every patient is different and the blog is through their lens and how that disease, how those treatments affected that one patient. Um, it's a great place for support um, and oftentimes blogs will link you out to legitimate websites, um, studies, um, places they went to for support. But that's really where their value lies, is in helping you um, through a difficult time or a stressful time um, versus actually getting good information from them. News. Um, we often will hear news stories, which will contain a, just a piece of information, but not all the facts. Um, make sure that the story ver verifies whether the research involved humans or animals, um, people, how many, how long was the study, what type of study. Who paid for the research? Um, for an example, I had actually had a family member who reached out to me saying, I saw this study, um, this medication was used for something else, but now they're finding, um, you know, it works for alopecia. Uh, do you know anything about it? You know, should I give it a try? Well, they didn't tell her, you know, anything about where the study was, who did it, um, what were the, the overall outcomes. It just, it was promising. Um, so she linked me to the, the new story and I did a little more investigation. Well, this is what the drug was originally used for. And from there found, uh, eventually found the article that they were talking about, the study. Well, it was just one study. And sure enough, there are certain um you know, side effects you need to consider. Um, so I passed that along to her and I said, here is the original study. Take that to your doctor and you you have a conversation with your doctor about, is this 
you know, uh, something good for you to try. Um, books, things to think about. Is the author an expert? Has it been reviewed by other experts? How old is the book? Does the book list sources? Um, books are great. The challenge with books are that the publishing world moves a little slower and it is very expensive. So things will not be updated as quickly as, say, as something you'll find on the Internet. Um, but they they are a great source of information because they're usually a lot more comprehensive than things you'll find on the Internet. And they're great for things, again, that aren't really going to go out to date um, very quickly. Um, coping, um, even um, with cancer. You know, we have several books here in our library that are about how to cope with cancer. That's not really going to change very much, very much, because it is talking about your well-being, your mental health, um, you know, things like that. Child development um, are not going to change a whole lot. So if it's outside of that three to five years, um, which we usually look for in an article, um, that's that's OK, because the publishing world is a little bit behind where the Internet is. Um, even if, when a website has the appearance of authority, um, the features presented always always examine the information with a critical eye. I always say, when in doubt, doubt. Um, be wary of sites that make emotional appeals and use lots of exclamation points. <laughs> Avoid sites that make claims of new or miracle cures. Um, sorry, <laughs> I have a light that goes out. Um, Question the credibility of sites that disrespect other sources of information. Um, be skeptical of a site whose primary purpose is to sell you something. Um, one more thing, every consumer health web website should include a statement reminding readers that it is for information purposes only and should no not be a substitute for the advice of a physician or a healthcare provider. I usually tell families when they come to me here in the library that um, it's a good starting point. It's a great place for you to kind of gather ideas about questions you need to ask your own provider. Um, it's not going to replace, you know, a diagnosis or, you know, recommendations for treatment. Um, it gives you a guideline for dialogue with your, your healthcare professional. Um, and, and that's really what it's, what it's there for. Um, it's not a substitute for um, medical advice of a physician or other healthcare provider. So now I want to quickly um, share another screen with you. Um, and this is Medline Plus um, to kind of circle back to my all time favorite Love it, love it, love it. This is mostly what I use um, here at Levine Children's Hospital. Um, this is MedlinePlus.gov. Um, wonderful, wonderful website, but I want to take you through it um, just to kind of show you um, how to navigate a site like this. Um, it's pretty easy. Let's say your child was just diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Easily type in um, the topic. Um, Medline Plus will will bring up a number of um, sub, you know, places where the information lives. Um, I always start with health topics, and that is usually what is at the top. So, and I'm going to show you why this is kind of why I call it the one stop shop. Here's type one diabetes, which is also known as juvenile diabetes. And if you scroll down, you will see a summary, which is a very quick and dirty um, overview of this particular illness. And then it'll give you kind of your first, your first starts. As you'll see, as I told you, there are a lot of websites that will link you out to other websites. Um, Medline Plus is, is, is one of the those. Um, it has its own content, but it also will link you out to Mayo Clinic, um, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, NUMARS, um, so an NIH um, website. 
So it's a really, really great place to start. And it's kind of like its own search engine. Then you can get very specific um, symptoms of diabetes, also with the American Diabetes Association. Um, the different diagnostic tests and um, that you will find. Treatments and, and therapies. Um, management, living with diabetes. Um, other related issues. Genetics videos and tutorials. It's all right here and you're not having to just burrow through page after page after page. It's all right here on one page. You just a simple one click and then you're to your article. Um, clinical trials, journal articles. This is also wonderful because National Library of Medicine um, manages both Medline Plus as well as PubMed. This will take you out to, to the latest journal articles first. Um, and you will see, let's say, the impact of low-carb diet. Here it takes you to PubMed. This particular article does happen to be full text. And um, the great thing about Medline Plus is usually the top articles that they have listed will be ones that... Um, are the latest, most recent articles, as well as what is available full text. Not everything on PubMed is going to be full text. It really is up to the publisher. Um, publishers are very territorial. They don't often like to give away their content for free, um, but sometimes they do, and that's amazing. Um, you'll likely also see it more in pediatrics where you'll get um, free information versus um, with other patient populations. But if you scroll down, you'll see it's, it's full text. And then the other wonderful thing is um, similar articles. If you're looking for articles along the same lines, he, um, it gives you link outs to those articles as well. Again, it'll start with the free articles first and then um, go to the ones who are just abstracts. Um, and then it also will give you over here, you'll see citing articles. Um, and these are, um, there's the references. And then it'll also give you sightings, um, articles where this article was also cited. Um, so that's really helpful if you're ready to go down the rabbit hole of uh, research. So back to um, Medline Plus. Next, you'll find experts. These are usually organizations um, that are expert in that field. Um, and then it will we'll separate it out by patient population. Because we typed in type 1 diabetes, that is specific most of the time to children. So the only patient population it really is looking at is children. Let's say we typed in lymphoma. Um, it, would, it would actually have articles that were specific to children, but then it might also have articles that are specific to older adults, elderly, and then women. Um, women's or, um, females are another patient population that they will kind of tease out what is specific to um, that patient population um, in order for you to see those articles, articles specifically. And then these are patient handouts. These are um, more medical encyclopedia type of articles. Um, it will also let you know that it's in Spanish um, if you need that. It is just a wonderful, wonderful website. Um, videos, we already um, told you that um, you can also look at videos on this website. Um, the other great thing about Medline Plus is you can switch over to Spanish. Um, this is particularly helpful to maybe librarians who are helping um, a, a patron look for information. Um, we do get a lot of Spanish speaking families here. Unfortunately, I do not speak Spanish, but a lot of times I can un I can get from them what initially it is that they want. And I can come to Medline Plus type it in English and then flip the entire page over into Spanish so they can then look through and see what articles that they, they want to read. Um, so that is a really, really helpful tool um, to have. Uh, another website that um, we had talked about, and I will switch over here, that it's a really great website is um, for pediatrics specifically is um, Kids Health. 
this is the article that was specific to diabetes. But the great thing about Kids Health is you, as I said before, you can listen to the article. If you have vision problems or you have problems reading, um, this is a great way to hear the article. Some people are just auditory learners. They learn better by listening. So you can listen to someone read the article and um, still be able to get the information, um, even though reading it may be difficult for you. Um, another great thing about Kids Health is it will um, actually separate out information that is specific to parents, what is written for kids, um, and this is usually at around a third or fourth grade reading level. Um, and then teens, what is um, an article that would be written for teens? So that way, if you want to give your child something to read on their, their new diagnosis or their disease, um, this is a great place to go because you can um, get an article that is geared specifically for their age. And that is Medline Plus, probably one of the best websites you will ever go to. Um, I know a lot of folks have heard of WebMD. <laughs> um, it is not my go-to website, only because um, you uh, it's not as easy to search as uh, medlineplus.gov, in my opinion, it's not organized as well. Um, one of my least favorite things is symptom tracker. Um, I think they call it that now. Um, it used to be called symptom check, I believe. Um, worst thing you can do when looking for information is to type in a bunch of symptoms and hope that you're gonna be able to diagnose yourself. <laughs> um, mainly because you know, there are a variety of symptoms that could be anything. Um, we we see that a lot with uh, our family members who do that. Um, sometimes I'll find, see parents that come in and start typing in um, a lot of symptoms, trying to figure out, you know, what is wrong with their child. Um, and that is really like the worst thing you could do. Um, the other thing that... Um, I don't really love about WebMD is that it is sponsored by advertisers. Um, they have in recent years gotten really good about um, letting you know at the top of an article what is sponsored content. Um, it used to be, it didn't used to be that way. And um, you would often get a lot of hits that were sponsored by particular drug companies. And unfortunately that can lead to bias in the information. Um, if that's the only content that is coming up initially. So I just, um, it, it does get um, a lot of usage and I just would recommend that people be leery of, you know, how they are using it um, and just make sure that you are noticing, um, you know, who sponsored the content, if it's sponsored um, and, and things like that. Um, another, other website that often gets, well, a search engine is Google. A lot of people type in their symptoms into Google and, and hope they're going to get a diagnosis. Um, again, not a great idea. Um, we often get here in the hospital uh, kids who are what I call the mystery diagnosis of the week. Um, you know, the physicians are running tests and, and trying to figure out what is wrong with the patient. And they will often throw out a number of possibilities to families. And then the family comes down here and wants to research all of it. Um, it's not really very productive. I usually try to steer families away from that just because there is a lot of information um, out on the Internet and it can be overwhelming. Um, so if you are gathering all this information of possibilities of a diagnosis, then um, you're going to get overwhelmed and stressed even more than you already are. Um, you know, we're, we always want our children to be happy and healthy. And when they're sick, um, it does cause a lot of stress. And, you know, that is not going to help. I always recommend to families 
you know, to wait. Waiting is hard, but to wait and see what the diagnosis is. Um, and then and then come look for information. You're going to be a lot less stressed if you do that. Um, and nearly every single time a family will come back and they were like, you were right. I should have waited because it turns out it's not any of those things that they thought it was. And this is what our diagnosis now is. Um, it just will will save you a lot of worry and stress if you just wait and, and find out what the diagnosis is. Um, one last thing, a shameless plug for the Levine Children's Hospital Family Resource Center. Um, you can contact us at any time. Uh, here's my email and phone number. We are open to the public. You do not have to be a Levine Children's Hospital patient to use our resources. Anybody in the community can contact us and we will help you. Um, I hope the tips that I've given you um, will help you navigate uh, internet sites um, that you're searching. But if you um, don't want to do the search or you're really um, unsure of what you found, please reach out to us and we're happy to help. Now, do any of you have any questions? Angela, thank you for this fabulous presentation. It was full of information that I know all of our viewers can use. I just want to be sure that I remind everybody that while Charlotte Mecklenburg Library is not a health library per se, we do have a large collection of health related books. In addition, we have public computers at most of our branches, all of our branches. And if you ever need to come in and use our computers to research something that Angela has mentioned on the internet, or you have problems navigating something, our librarians and library assistants at the branches We'll be happy to help you. And you can also print materials from there. And I just wanted to reinforce Angela and ask, we did have a quick question now. All of these okay. resources are free, right? They're not behind firewalls. Correct. They're all free. Um, the only um, one that may occasionally you would get um, Nord or some of the disease specific websites will ask you just for demographic information. Um, a lot of the cancer websites will sometimes, but it's just so that they know you want it for a patient that, you know, it's just to keep up with the demographics. They don't share it, but um, the websites themselves are all free. Okay. Right. And I think that concludes our program for today. Angela, again, this was a great program. I know Thank a you. lot of people are going to um, learn a lot from this. I, again, know that Medline Plus is a fabulous resource. I love <laughs> the fact that it's bilingual because that really helps a lot for all of us who are not bilingual. Yeah. And, and the great... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say the other great thing is um, there are other languages on Medline Plus. Um, most of the content is um, specific to um, kind of just general pediatric care or general health for other demographics. Um, some of the rare diseases you're not going to find in Russian, <laughs> but um, it does have a number of other languages as well. So that's wonderful. And before we conclude, we are one of our guests today is Elise Barrier. She's our children's librarian at Charlotte Mecklenburg Library. Elise, did you have any comments or questions or anything you wanted to add? This program was excellent. Thank you so much, Angela, for sharing this wealth of information. Parents and caregivers out there, if you are interested in attending any other um, Charlotte Mecklenburg Library programs for parents, please visit our calendar at cmlibrary.org forward slash calendar. And you can search, um, toggle the parent caregiver option on the side and you'll be brought to all of those programs. So thanks everyone for attending and we hope you'll join us again. Mm -hmm.